<clears throat> Good day folks, this is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. I'm out here again on a really cold morning. That's the first time we've seen the sun in over a week. You can't see it right here, but it's up. We're kind of up against a big bluff right here. But uh, this is where the cattle were put in last night. And uh, I was surprised, we both, everybody was, boy it's rough right here. Running over frozen cow pads. I feel like mine minefields out here. But uh, when we pulled up here this morning, we unrolled the bale way up the hill there, just this side of those ten bins. And when we came down here this morning, there wasn't a single animal that had ate from it. Not one. And it's just I think it seven below last night or some crazy number it's cold and uh but these cattle they made a mad dash run over to this field we gave them this field last night and there was about uh, four acres in it really really nice stockpile and i mean they really put the hammer on them there's still some left in here and so we're just going to give them this one bale because they still got a bale up there by the water tank that we unrolled last night that they haven't touched and so we're gonna make them clean that up with the stockpile there's snow here and so we noticed that the cattle did not go back to water last night uh, the tank was cut open the water tank but they didn't go back to water but the snow's all gone or most of it's gone here there's not much snow around here and uh, so the cattle got their water requirements or needs from the snow and, you know as cold as it is too their, their water demand is going to go down big time but uh yeah the cows they're you can tell they're they're not too hungry look at that i mean they're over there by but most of them are just kind of standing around looking at it not even there's a few eating it cold weather you'd think they'd just be tearing it up but that just tells you they're not hungry which is awesome folks you can get your cows where they're not hungry and it's seven below zero you know they've got good body condition on them uh, you know they're, they're packing good weight and uh they're getting plenty they're getting plenty of intake to stay warm and you know if cows don't get enough to eat in this kind of weather you'll certainly see the body condition come off well, you think that cow weaned 50% of her calf? She hadn't weaned it yet, but it's getting a little bit of milk. That's uh, probably about a May-born calf. Well, she, she did her job. You gotta watch where I'm driving out here. I don't wanna run into one of these trees. But, uh, boy, it's so beautiful to see the sun. Seven days, over seven days, we haven't seen the sun. And some of those cows are laying down up in that sun. There's still one laying down, just trying to get up up there. <laughs> it's like, ooh, there it goes. It laid there all night. It's like, it's about half stiff looking, it looked like. But anyway, the uh, we've, we're going to leave them here today. We've got uh, four more paddocks in this next permanent paddock. So already split up with our poly. So we'll get four days off of that paddock. And then we have the cockleburr field over there, the old cockleburr field. Uh, we're gonna get uh, three days off of that because we'll, we'll get three moves. So we, we move them three times and in between those moves, we'll stretch it out a little bit by giving them a little bit of hay. And uh, then we'll do that again up the hill there. And we're gonna be pretty close to leaving this farm. Um, well, we've got it penciled in for the 18th. 18th of uh, February and I think we're gonna hit it about right and uh, what's pretty cool about all this is uh, we've got a grazing chart that the boys and I are filling out and we've been able to calculate out exactly how much feed we have how many days of grazing we have and uh, <clears throat> that's that's a video we're gonna do one on that uh, right now we're in what we call the dormant season or they call it the, the closed season part of the grazing plan, meaning that we're not growing any more feed. And so you have this 
there's two charts you fill out one for the growing season and one for the dormant season so the the growing season is actually called you can name it growing season or open open season because you don't know how much forage you're going to grow all you know is you have a chance to grow a ton of it if you graze correctly and if you get some rain which normally you do you'll get some um this has been a pretty dry winter but you know uh we're, we're pretty fortunate uh, we we've got some we've got some moisture um right here folks uh i gotta slow down because i'll break a i'll break a ball joint on my truck right here in front of me this area of the farm there's about an acre right here and you can't hardly drive over it and it's it is more of a uh, one of the wetter spots on the farm and uh what happened here was we had those great big old cows back in the day of custom grazing and they plowed it they absolutely plowed this area and that was uh 18 years ago and it's never recovered i mean it's it's got grass on it don't get me wrong but you can't hardly ride a four-wheeler across it. I'm going to back up and try and go around it. Well, the cows are... Oh, yeah, they're liking what they're seeing now. See, when I'm backing up, uh, that hay's coming off there thicker now instead of petting the cat, like Isaac termed that phrase, him and Ben. It's coming off there really thick. I just got to watch it on back into a thorn tree. <clears throat> But again, uh, when you damage your pastures with cattle, big ones, it doesn't recover for a while. And we're going on eight, 18 years, and it's still rough over there. You just, you just can't hardly drive on it. And you know, this is a lease farm, and so I've got a brush hog it occasionally to keep the brush down. Just so it's kind of what I told the landowner I would do. So I'm going to do what I said I'd do. But this area right here on a tractor, you've got to gear down to like second, second gear and go slower. You'll break, you'll break, you'll break some metal. You'll break something on your tractor or your brush hog, and you can't hardly stay in the tractor seat. So you got to go really slow through here. I mean, it's just rough. It's a nice piece of bottom too, but I don't know. You could probably fix it if you came in here with a disc and disc this up and harrow it up. But golly, I hate bare soil. And we've got a good sod of that fescue on it so you know we don't we don't mow hay on our farm so you don't have to worry about tearing up your hay equipment trying to hay it but you just got to go slow when you brush hog or drive across it the cows don't care it's you know they're walking on it with cloven hooves so it's not going to bother them but uh it's a it's a rough piece of ground <laughs> just wanted to show you oh my gosh wow just glad the whole farm isn't like that. I understand now why people put their cattle up in uh, what they call sacrifice areas and they got big cows and it's wet because they will, they'll do this to your whole farm. These little cows don't do that. It can rain and rain and rain and rain and rain and they're not gonna leave ruts that stay there for 18 years. That's just nuts. It's almost like having earth, you know, uh, some type of earth moving stuff you know it's just that it's that brutal well making a lot of windrow with this one bale right. oh, here I am back out in the middle of the darn monster cow pugged area of the farm Ugh. man I'm just glad we just have a little area of it otherwise I don't know if I could take it uh, it came off good but uh, we're going to go here and cut the ice this morning. <clears throat> so now that it's daylight and we do have some hay out, the cows are going to get thirsty. And they're going to eat some of this hay because we're not moving them on the stockpile. That's, you can see in front of me right here. Um, I'm not going to show you. So this is what they're on. Still a lot of grass. That's why we're not moving them. I mean, look at that. There's a, there's a clump of grass they haven't even touched yet. We still got green grass in here and uh, seven below zero. People wonder why I like Kentucky 31 fescue. Because it's the most money making grass there is on the planet. 
in Missouri in the wintertime. There is no other grass that'll make you as much money as that grass will. So we, here you can see I'm hooked on cold. I'm going through that Kentucky 31 all the way over to those cedar trees. So this will be one paddock and then there's three more going toward the blacktop there. And you can see in the distance over there, there's the water tank. We have one little issue though. We can't start grazing on this paddock first because they can't get to the water because we've got three paddocks in front of them. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go put a lane in and uh, we'll shoot them down the other side of those cedars all the way to the front of the farm and then we'll start grazing this way from the water tank. So that's the beautiful thing about having just one single wire. You know, that's a high tensile wire, then there's a poly. The poly and the temporary post, it's just unbelievable the flexibility it gives you. And people say, but Greg, how do you get a post in when it's seven below zero? Well, it's easy, easier when you got stockpile like that. Um, the stockpile insulates the ground, and so it will go in. Now, once they graze it off and they, they take, you know, like 80% of that off of there, you can't get a post in when it's seven below. You've got to bring a drill with a concrete bit on it and drill a hole in the ground to put your, your, your step in. Boy, it's just brutal out here. These cows, they're not, they're not hurting at all. Well, we got some high quality hay rolled and look at that. They're just standing around kind of nipping on the stockpile. That one is. Look how good a condition she's in. Yeah, she's doing good. Again, she's, you know, that's a, that's a South Pole heifer. Uh, she's been exposed to a bolt, so she'll probably be calving this summer sometime. And uh, she's just doing good. There's, boy, there's another nice one. 926, you're a beaut. Again, they're, they're not, you know, 1,400 pounds. They're 900. Look out, guy. He's just like, I'm going to stand be He's using this truck as a windbreak. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's doing. You see, some of the cows got a few bare spots missing on their hair. They're rubbing on trees and things. That is uh, what they call. We get it every time this year. About this time of year, you you get some lice spots on your cattle, and a lot of people get them up and they'll uh, pour them with Ivamec and such. And you know knock the lice off and you can do that but boy you're killing a lot of soil biology and uh about 10 days of april sun then lice are gone it just knocks it out so you know it's seven eight dollars a head to pour them with all that crap it's going to kill your you know it's going to kill your manure pads if you've got uh, worms on your farm and you start pouring the crap on your cattle all those manure pads become toxic time bombs. There's nothing going to eat them. Worms won't touch them. Dung beetles won't touch them. It's just, it's a good way to go broke. So, you know, just in nature, it kind of takes care of itself. Keep your animals in good condition. If they lose a little bit of hair, don't worry about it. It's going to be taken care of when that April sun hits them. So, yeah, everybody's... I'm getting a lot of emails, people are freaking out about, oh, I got some bare spots. There's 160, she's been rubbing right there on her neck. She's got a little bit, but the rest of her is good. Some of them get it worse than others, and I've heard people say, well, you should call animals for that. You could, you could call them, and I don't know, that might take care of it. Uh, we don't, just for that, but uh, there's, a, there's a nice little heifer. She's just, she's just a picturesque, beautiful heifer. She looks like a girl, too. She's very feminine. She's got a big old butt on her, big old gut, fine bones on her legs. She's going to make a cow, 926. Beautiful animal. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. We're going to get back in the truck, go cut the ice. And everyone, hit that subscribe button on the way out, and uh, we'll check you all out down the road.